Hello, friends. This is A Course in Miracles study group. We're on chapter 10, section two, the decision to forget. In the book, it's in the text on page 183. Unless you first know something, you cannot disassociate it. Knowledge must preclude disso dissociation so that dissociation is nothing more than a decision to forget. What has been forgotten then appears to be fearful, but only because the dissociation is an attack on truth. You are fearful because you have forgotten and you have replaced your knowledge by an awareness of dreams because you are afraid of your dissociation, not of what you have dissociated. When what you have dissociated is accepted, it ceases to be fearful. So what they're saying here is that we were spiritual beings content to be in heaven with our father. And then we decided to forget. We have free will and we thought we could separate ourselves from God, that we could dissociate from heaven. And so we did have knowledge of, of uh, the spirit world, but we decided to try to separate ourselves. And so we forgot. And so we fell into the dream, created the ego, which created the fear. Now we're afraid that God's going to punish us. And that's why we keep stuck in the ego, because we're afraid to reunite and to remember our, our, our spiritual selves because there's this fear that ego's implanted about uh, God punishing us. And that's why we have all the religions that talk about the devil and hell and all of that, and, and, and which, which none of it is true. And, um, and so it's very difficult to, to get back to where we once belonged. But when we finally accept this knowledge and we remember, we cease to be fearful and we come out of the ego. Welcome, Ed. We're on page 183. We just started. It's chapter 10, section 2, The Decision to Forget. Uh, we just explained that we uh, did dissociate from uh, God by thinking we could separate and created the ego and we forgot. And that made us afraid and uh, made us believe that there was a hell and all of that, that God was going to punish us. So paragraph two starts, yet to give up the dissociation of reality brings uh, more. Yes, David. I, I just did. I was say what brought to my mind is like in the, the first section is what about they say that children, when they're born, they they remember up until a certain age their past or God. Uh, does that relate here? Is there any way to relate that to this paragraph? Well, um, from what I understand about reincarnation, uh, depending on how advanced the soul is spiritually advanced, 
uh, when it incarnates and is a small child, it may still retain memory of the spirit world. And um, we fall into an amnesia for the most part when we're born because it's kind of like a reset button. It's like, okay, we've been, um, we've been here before, uh, we had a life and we quote unquote died, went back to spirit, now we're being reincarnated and it's like a reset button to forget the past but some children uh, do remember their past life, do remember being in the spirit world, at least for a, a bit until they get acc acclimated again to being in, in a physical body. And so, yes, this is common, common sometimes for some people. Uh, again, I think the more spiritually advanced the person is, the, the more that is a possibility. And some people who are really advanced and, and have uh, psychic abilities, uh, even when they're children, um, you know, can hold on to that, that knowledge through, through the incarnation. But it's it's a very individual thing, and and a lot of it has to do with with your past karma, and um, and your reason for incarnating. I mean, some people like the Dalai Lama, for example, uh, incarnates to be a spiritual teacher, and so it is important for people like that to remember their past, remember the spirit world because they're here to teach uh, that knowledge. If they don't remember, then they can't be very effective teachers. So the same, the same was true for Jesus and Buddha. These, these were people who were very spiritually advanced, uh, reincarnated, uh, to fulfill this specific function, to be teachers, uh, spiritual teachers on the planet. And so they, they remembered much more so than others and came more into memory as time went on as they grew up into adulthood. Okay, then, so let's go to uh, paragraph two. Yet to give up the disassociation of reality brings more than merely lack of fear. In this decision lie joy and peace and the glory of creation. Offer the Holy Spirit only your willingness to remember, for he retains the knowledge of God and of yourself for you, waiting for your acceptance. Give up gladly everything that would stand in the way of your remembering, for God is in your memory. His voice will tell you that you are part of him when you are willing to remember him and know your own reality again. Let nothing in this world delay your remembering of him. For in this remembering is the knowledge of yourself. So when they start off by saying, give up the disassociation of reality, that means is give up your forgetting about the spirit world that you came from. Because when you forget about where you came from, you, you go into fear, but you're also giving up joy and peace 
and the glory of creation. You're forgetting those things also. So offer the Holy Spirit your willingness to remember. Remember the Holy Spirit dwells each and every, the mind of each and every person. And he is there as the voice of God to help us to remember and get back to where we belong. So he retains the knowledge of God and of yourself. In other words, your true self for you. And Holy Spirit is just waiting for you to accept that. So then it says, give up gladly everything that would stand in your way. Of course, that, that's the ego. Give, gladly give up the ego and, um, and get back to remembering who you really are. And in this remembering is the knowledge of your true self, of your spiritual self. Any questions? David. Well, I remember at some point uh, in my life that I came from love. And when I when I be the lover, or, um, people respond to me. Um, and it, it's, it, it's, you know, it changes, it changed my life. And I always had that inside of me, but uh, when I was no longer afraid to express it and show it, then I noticed that I was also able to notice it in other people. Um, and some, you know, some was, uh, I don't know how to explain it, never said it before. Very you good. Know, there's love in, you know, in everybody, but there's some people that can show it. And you can feel it. Like I was at Costco today and I walked by this woman and I, I felt like I felt it. And, and so I looked over at her and she smiled at me. Yeah. You're, you're becoming more and more sensitive to uh, the spirit within yourself and everybody else. Very good. Thank you. Yes, I see your hand, Ed. Okay, I I got in here a little late, I guess, and I don't I don't I don't remember. I don't I don't know what this I don't understand this remembering. Remembering that you're a spiritual being. You are a spiritual being before you forgot you were a spiritual being and 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 came into the uh, ego illusion. And so now we're trying to remember that we're spiritual beings and we're trying to reverse it. We're trying to forget the ego and remember spirit because before we forgot spirit and got into the ego. So we're trying to reverse it. Okay, so this is not a, an activity of the brain, so to speak, in terms of remembering. This is a spiritual remembering yes it's a it's a function of the mind not the the brain the brain is a tool that the mind uses but mind is above and beyond anybody anybody's individual brain right we actually all share the same mind because mind wow. is of spirit Thank you. You're welcome. And Helen, did you wish to speak? Yeah, I have something to say. I don't know how this is going to come out, but I, so going back to what David said, um, children are born um, knowing. They, they come connected with God. Um, and then over the, so, 
so that and up until and he is it is from what I understand understand through early childhood education, children learn everything they will learn in life in like little I look at it like little circuits up until they're five years old. So that's when the disassociation starts. And so so for example, if a child is abused as a young child, that abuse may, chances are, turn to fear or not be nurtured in the way that they should be. That's when fear starts to show up, I would suspect. Now, there are many people that live in this life, living their whole life in the fear, but then there are the people that remember and they take their fear and change it and fix it and live their life in a way that they were here to live. Does that make sense so far? I, I do understand what you're saying, but what you're saying isn't quite what the course is talking about here. Okay, all right. So I'm so now I'm speaking personally about myself. That what I can remember when I was five years old, and I can remember certain things that I have I did um, that I brought with me from 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 God. I felt it like my whole entire life. And so that's why I that's why I have this opinion of how this works um, because of how I feel. Can Can you give us an example of that? Yes, um, I when I was young, under five years old, I looked out my window and I had a vision of Arizona. Now. I didn't know what Arizona was, but my friend who lived across the street was moving to Arizona. So that was one thing. Another thing was, um, let, let me see. I, I knew, I knew, oh, this was probably when I was older, but I knew that my, parents when they used to fight i knew that they weren't fighting about a particular issue i knew the issue they were fighting about was never never discussed so i could see things i i could see things that weren't concrete I guess I'm not giving a very good example. I don't feel no, like that's a good example. I, I, I think I understand what you're saying. My my response is that um, you know you're you're showing uh, that you uh, since you uh, were born being very intuitive and uh, psychic um, to use those terms. So so you you could. Uh, uh, you could see Arizona in your mind by hearing the word and and, um, and understand that there were uh, other issues between your parents that weren't spoken about that was causing turmoil. And so you were uh, very intuitive and, and psychic about these things. And, um, and so... Um, like I said earlier, uh, some children are born with with uh, these abilities. Um, but the, the remembering that we're specifically talking about here in this passage that we're reading is remembering that we are spiritual beings. 
remembering that we are eternal beings, remembering that there's only one of us, remembering that we are not our bodies, remembering that we have never been separated from our Father God remembering that we are creators uh, just as he is, that we are the son of God. And so it's on that level, on that spiritual remembering that we're talking about here. And I, that, thank you. Yes, yes, I, 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 I recognize that. Thank you. You're well. Um, I was just trying to put it in more personal and concrete terms um, for myself. That because what you were saying, I know in some place in my body, I know the this to be the truth. However, my experiences have not yet realized to the degree that we're reading about. I'm working on it, it will happen, but there's a certain degree, a certain level that I have not achieved yet. Yes, and, and that's true for all of us, which is what the book is teaching us, that we're all in the same boat. This is true yes. for all of us, you know? And, and some people are ready to hear what the Course is teaching and other people aren't. And, and it was the same when, when Jesus was preaching, he said, let those who have eyes see and those who have ears hear. You know, if you're ready for the message, then you can understand it, but not everybody has the eyes to see or the ears to hear, they're, they're not ready yet. They still have to go through other ego experiences before, you know, it's it's the same thing like, uh, uh, like uh, people who are in AA with addictions. It's like, you're not ready until you hit rock bottom. You know, you, you have to come to that point where you're ready to hear the message it's the same thing when they say, when when you're ready, the teacher will appear. You know, um, th that's that's what it is. So we can count ourselves as ready <laughs> more so than others. But the, the others who are not studying the course are in the not ready category. And those around the world, and there are millions around the world who are studying the course to one degree or another, and they are in the ready category. So now we each have to progress individually, and, uh, and it's just like uh, everything else in life, you know. There's, uh, there's some people that are only five years old, and there's other people who are 95 years old. There's some people that are just learning how to play the piano, and there's other people who are concert pianists. I mean, you know, so it's, it's, all, it's all on a spectrum. Um, and I think this covers it. His voice will tell you that you are part of him when you are willing to remember him and know your own reality again. Yes, exactly. That's sentence five, paragraph two, sentence five. His voice, which is the Holy Spirit, will tell you that you are part of him, God the Father, when you are willing to remember him, because we have free will and it has to be our choice, and know our own reality again because we knew it at one time, we forgot it. And that's when we descended into ego. That was the fall of man. But the next sentence is fabulous. Let nothing in this world delay your remembering of him. 
and in the remembering is the knowledge of yourself. Correct. Yes. Thank you, Alan. Are we ready to go on to number three? Yes, please. All righty then. Um, uh, paragraph three. To remember is merely to restore to your mind what is already there. You do not make what you remember. You merely accept again what is already there, but was rejected. The ability to accept truth in this world is the perceptual counterpart of creating in the kingdom. God will do his part if you will do yours. And his return in exchange for yours is the exchange of knowledge for perception. Nothing is beyond his will for you. But signify your will to remember him and behold, he will give you everything but for the asking. So the important thing here is to realize the keywords that are being used. Um, the uh, sentence three, the ability to accept truth. Right, truth is a key word, and truth always means spirit. The ability to accept spirit in this world, in the ego world, is a perceptual. Perception is always ego. The perceptual counterpart of creating in the kingdom. So accepting the truth is the same as creating in, in God's kingdom. And God will do his part if you'll do yours. That's like, you know, um, oh, what's the saying? Uh, God helps them who help themselves. <laughs> well, help yourself to God and God will help you to him. And in return for yours is the exchange of knowledge for perception. Again, the exchange of spirit for ego. Did you have uh, something, Helen? Uh, no, no. Oh, okay. You're, you're unmuted, so. I know, because I got a message that said you wanted me to unmute. You know, I pressed that just after you pressed the mute button. I didn't know okay. you were going to mute yourself. <laughs> There you go. You did it. You did it for me. I, I won't have to. I won't have to mute you anymore. I know you'll do it. All righty. So, we're number four. John, I'll interrupt you again. Oh, okay, David. What came to my mind is talking about free will in this paragraph. The, you know, that's a new idea on free will for me. As far as we have, we can choose spirit or we can choose ego. And the, my next thought is so uh, we have to be conscious in order to do that. Oh, yes. You, you have to be conscious of, of, of your choice. You, you have to realize you have free will. You have to realize you have the choice. You have to realize what the choice is. And then you have to realize that you can make the choice. So yeah, you, you have to be very conscious of, of what's going on here in, in order to achieve the goal. Anything else, David? Uh, just to say thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we're at number four. When you attack, are we on number four? Yes. 
When you attack, you, you are denying yourself. You are specifically teaching yourself that you are not what you are. Your denial of reality pro precludes the acceptance of God's gift because you have accepted something else in its place. If you understand that this is always an attack on truth and truth is God, you will realize why it is always fearful. If you further recognize that you are part of God, you will understand why it is that you always attack yourself first. So that's the way the ego sets it up. By, by denying God, we're attacking ourselves because, well, basically we are God, so we're attacking ourselves. We're the son of God. There's only one of us. We're one with God. So to attack God is to attack ourselves. And as paragraph two says, when we do that, when we're so involved in ego, we're actually teaching ourselves that we're not who we truly are. We're teaching ourselves that we're just ego human beings instead of realizing that no, we're, we're spiritual beings. Any questions? So paragraph five continues, all attack is self attack. It cannot be anything else. Arising from your own decision not to be what you are, it is an attack on your identification. Attack is thus the way in which your identification is lost. Because when you attack, you must have forgotten what you are. And if your reality is God's, when you attack, you are not remembering him. This is not because he is gone, but because you are actively choosing not to remember him. So, <laughs> Everything is our own fault. <laughs> we have free will. We can choose to remember God or we can choose to forget God. And God gave us free will. He gave us that ability to, to, because he wants us. He wants us to come to him in accordance with our own mind. He wants us to remember him because we want to. God's spirit will not force us to remember God. If you want to stay in ego for a billion years, God was, would hope that you don't take that long, but if that's what it is, that's what it is. He is very patient. He's got all the time in the, in the universe because there is no time. God's eternal. So a billion years doesn't, doesn't really mean anything to God. So yes, Ed. Um, if you feel... Uh, anger at a politician who is um, you don't working, have to against your, working against your your democratic philosophy let's say and is is limiting your your life experience and you feel anger towards this individual, are you attacking? Um, and uh, 
how do we how are we supposed to deal with this kind of thing when when essentially what they're doing is attacking us by their actions by their bills the things that they're Uh, I understand where you're coming from. And I'm going to say that the scenario you've outlined is a scenario that happens in the ego world. It's ego attacking ego. They're attacking you. You're attacking them with your anger at them for attacking you. And it's a, just ego fighting ego. And, and the only way out of that is to rise above that, to realize that they are you, that you are them, that there's only one son of God, and that everybody is a part of that oneness, and to rise above it and send love and forgiveness. That's the only way out. The only way out of ego is to turn to spirit. And spirit, God's will is love and forgiveness. I agree. Um, I, I, but I'd like to be a little more specific. So to me, what I would what I have learned is that because there's been many times when I felt anger towards some of the things that are happening. And, and so what I had to do was the same thing, John, that you're talking about is I had to turn to love and I had to figure out about that particular person or that particular thing, find a way inside of me that I could love that person. I could release how I felt about that person in a negative way, how I felt angry or how I felt, you know, distrust. And I had to release that. So this is personally, this is my personal experience. And then turn, find a way to, to feel love about that particular issue whatever it may be. I mean, and I'm just speaking, you know, I don't do this on a regular basis, but I have been able to do it periodically. And I just found a way to something about that person that I could love. Maybe it was, you know, I don't know, the color of his eyes or her eyes or something. Or, you know, I, I don't think that's a really good example, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if if I may, we we have to be very very careful here with our vocabulary. Um, as you know, in, in the English language, there's love and there's love and there's love and there's love. You know, in in Greek, there's like agape and there's eros. So there's different words for different kinds of love. Now, when I'm saying we have to love, I'm talking about spiritual love. So, so spiritual love looks beyond the physical. So in other words, there's this politician, and I get angry and upset about what this politician, his policies and the words he's saying and the things he's doing. But I know that all of that is happening in the ego world. And I know that my response, if I respond in like kind, then I'm responding in ego. So for me to get angry or upset about his ego or her ego behavior is just putting myself into ego. So to rise above that, I have to look through, look past the ego body and say, I know that inside of you is the Holy Spirit, just as the Holy Spirit is within me. And I'm going to send spiritual love to the Holy Spirit in you 
And I am going to send spiritual forgiveness, the forgiveness and love of spirit from my spirit to your spirit and completely bypass your ego falderal that you're doing there. You don't know who you are. Because if you did, if you knew what you are, not who you are, but what, you don't know what you are. You don't know you're a spiritual being. Because if you did, you would not be behaving this way in the ego world. You would be behaving with compassion and ego love and forgiveness and what have you. You'd be trying to help people. You wouldn't be trying to hurt people but you don't know what you are. So I'm going to remember what you are for you. And I'm going to project that to you. And that's praying. When you pray for somebody, that's what true prayer is, is to look at them and say, I realize you're not the ego body that you think you are. You're a spiritual being. And you and I are one. We're the, we're the child of God. And I'm going to project that to you. That's perfect. Thank you, John. You're welcome. John? Yes, David. I think you should write that up because you're going to get that question again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's being recorded, so... <laughs> <laughs> you can find it in the future on YouTube, but um, it's it's nothing that I haven't said many times before. This is like... Well, you said it very well this time. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I say I, I send the person in love. I don't like what they do, but they're, they're because we are one, they are a part of me, and I'm reflection on them. I have to see the God in them. I got a call this week. I think it was a mistake. Uh, a, an old friend who introduced me to Diane, my wife, uh, called and she called my number by mistake. And I, I recently in my mind f forgave her the way she acted when her uh, husband was dying 10 years ago. And I know my voice was more loving because I had uh, forgiven her and I think she could feel it and uh, we happened to be going to uh, visit my daughter who moved to Colorado and this woman lives in the same city and um, so I feel good about it I feel um, her, her voice came from love even though she knew I was angry with her in the past and I showed it my, in my action and my voice that uh, I forgive her without, well, you know, use, using those words. Right, right. It was actually uplifting for me to yes. be in that situation. And I didn't think it would be. Oh, yeah, of course. Because what you do comes back to you. So... You know, I, I'm, I'm going to add a little bit more to this because, all right, I explained about working spiritually with, with people who uh, are in ego than doing things that might get you angry. But there are, there are other things that you can do in the ego that also make a difference. For example, I will vote, and I will vote for people who I believe will be will be better, will be people who are not spreading hate and fear and and who will make policies uh, for the betterment of of people um, uh, or or um, you know, just just being kind to people, um, giving when you can, when when the opportunity arises, being helpful, being giving, being kind, 
um, um, as some of us may be led to, um, you know, to volunteer, to um, to be tutors and, uh, with children and try to teach. Um, there, there's just there's so many different ways that we can be better people in the ego world without having to give into the hate and the anger in, involved in the situation. So I just want to point that out. It's, it's like it's not only spiritual projecting love and forgiveness, but in the ego world, you can project love and forgiveness, as, as David just explained. And and um, and other things that you can do uh, to to help. So we're on the very last um, paragraph of this section, number six. If you realize the complete havoc this makes of your peace of mind, you could not make such an insane decision. You make it only because you still believe it can get you something you want. It follows then that you want something other than peace of mind, but you have not considered what it must be. Yet the logical outcome of your decision is perfectly clear if you will only look at it. By deciding against your reality, you have made yourself vigilant against God and his kingdom. And it is this vigilance that makes you afraid to remember him. So if you want peace of mind, you need to choose spirit over ego. That will bring you peace of mind. To choose ego is an insane decision. And it's not what you really want, but it's what your ego self thinks it wants. So don't be afraid of God. Don't be afraid of spirit. Let that old ego fear just go away. Remember, if you walk into a dark room and you turn on the light, the darkness disappears. If you walk into ego and you turn on spirit, the ego disappears. But you have to flip the switch. Nobody else can do it for you. You have to flip the switch. We've come to the end of our uh, lesson for today. So are there any um, questions or comments to, still to be made? Just to mute if you wish to speak. All righty then, friends. I thank you very much for your attendance tonight and for your input in our discussion to this evening. And we'll take a few moments of silence and then we'll stop our recording.